it's Uncle Paul. I just finished preaching in Mason Church of Christ, and I'm trying to get out ahead of the storm. Ah, well, it is Monday morning, and I did beat that storm home last night. It was a two hour, two hour and 15 minute drive or so, and I did beat it. Uh, all the way back to Belton, but uh, the good thing too also was that uh, it was there was a cool front behind that storm, and so this morning uh, it's 63 degrees out here. Uh, it feels so wonderful. Okay, that's definitely a snake. And I'm not sure what kind it is from here. I don't see a rattler. He's not rattling. All right. <laughs> Well, we're going to leave him alone, Hurley, okay? We're going to leave him alone. Hurley, come on. Come on, Hurley. Here he goes. Going into the cactus. Come on, Hurley. We're going to leave it alone. Okay, Hurley got up another snake. Watch out, Hurley. I'm not sure it's moving fast. It... I'm not sure what kind it is. It's got... That might be a poisonous one. It had some color to it. It's hiding under there. That's a stick I think you're barking at right now. Come on. It went under that rock. Come on. Come on. Come on, Hurley. Those are sticks you're working at now. But you're... Whew. Okay, so fat and happy. Well, I'll get to that in just a minute. <clears throat> but first, uh, I want to share with you, you know, I mean, I y'all know I'm a Christian, you know, and I don't uh, go into a lot of that on this channel. But I do want to just uh, share with you or let you know of some passages that, that I read uh, every morning. I've been doing this for a little while now. I've all, of course I always read my Bible, but but these specifically I've chosen and <clears throat> fairly recently started reading them every day, usually in the morning time. And uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to read all this, of course, but I do want to. I want to read a few of them to you just to help kind of get my mind set right uh, with with the challenges I know I'm going to face and, and other things. <clears throat> and kind of the inspiration to face them, you know, the, the need that I have uh, to guard against certain things, the importance of it, and, you know, the find the strength and the inspiration to do it. So uh, a lot of these come out of the book of Proverbs. So uh, actually, I'm going to read a few of them, though. Proverbs 13 and verse 4, The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Also, Proverbs 15, 19, uh, The way of a lazy man is like a hedge of thorns, but the way of the upright is a highway. Chapter 20, and verse 4, The lazy man will not plow because of winter. He will beg during harvest and have nothing. 20, and verse 13, uh, Do not love sleep lest you come to poverty. Open your eyes and you will be satisfied with bread. 22 and verse 13, the lazy man says, there's a lion outside, I shall be slain in the streets. That's a good, that's a funny one. Uh, 25 and verse 28, uh, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. And here's part of uh, Proverbs 26, 13 through 16. As a door turns on its hinges, so does the lazy man on his bed. The lazy man buries his hand in the bowl. It wearies him to bring it back to his mouth. Okay, so that's that's a bunch of proverbs. There's a few more of those that I read, <clears throat> but some I'm not going to read all, uh, these to you. But other passages, I'll just reference them that I read every morning. Matthew 16, 24 through 25, Romans 8, 12 through 14, Romans 12, 1 and 2, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, Galatians 5, 22 to, uh, and 23, fruit of the Spirit, which self-control is one of them, uh, Philippians 4, 13. 
And there's two more down at the very bottom uh, that I'll read here in just a moment. Ooh, just got up another little snake. Uh, darn it, I didn't get it fast enough. Ooh. Well, it was just right over here, right where we walk to go out on the little trail. Don't know what that was. Good boy, Hurley. Good boy. And a boy. That that last snake there, I think, uh, I, I don't know. It may have been the same snake uh, as that second one. About two foot long, brown. It's hard to tell. I'm I'm concerned it may be a copperhead, but uh, but I don't know. Hadn't been close enough yet to tell. Anyway, okay. So uh, these last two two verses. Now, you know, I have been called. There, by some people year it's been a, a number of years now but I've been called uh, fat and happy and that's that was meant in a derogatory way it was meant to say that I'm fat and I like being fat I'm happy with being fat uh, not trying or don't care about losing weight at all I'm perfectly happy how I am fat and happy and they meant it as an insult and uh, well of course that's couldn't be further from the truth uh, but anyway, that was years ago. That's in the past. Now there were times that you know, you know, the jolly fat person, you know, the kind of the stereotypical jolly fat guy. I was kind of putting on that persona back in like my teenage years, maybe my very early twenties. You know, I, when I would be in a situation where, especially if I was meeting someone new or a group of people, you know, I wanted to, you know, to kind of to uh, beat them to the punch or or not thinking that they could like me as a fat guy because I was fat, you know, it, it, it was, uh, it was, you know, bad self-image and all of that. Uh, I tried to make them laugh. I tried to be the funny guy so that there'd be something about me that they would like. You know, that's how I was years ago. Uh, I don't, you know, now I don't so much care what people think of me too much, you know, but, uh, and, I, I am more accepting uh, about what I'm going through. I'm more at peace with my size. Not that I'm happy about it. I'm not, you know, real content about that, uh, about that aspect of my life. However, in general, and I've said this before, you know, I'm a happy person. You know, I'm a happy person. And, and, and so, and this is why, uh, really, I think, well, I'm a Christian, but in, in these two last passages that I, I read, at, at kind of the summing up all these other passages, uh, Proverbs 15 and verse 13 says, A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. In Proverb, Proverbs 15 and verse 15, All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. Why go around, regardless of your problems, you know, why let them bring you down? Why be miserable all the time? Why be depressed all the time? Yes, there are times I'm mis uh, a little bit miserable. There are times I'm frustrated. You know, there are times I'm a little bit depressed, but that's, that's just a, a, a small amount of my time. I think the majority of, of the time, you know, I try to have this, this cheerful countenance, this merry heart which I think in the context here, it's, it's talking about our thoughts, our attitude that we have, uh, you know, every day. And, and like I said, not every single day or every minute of every day is, is, is going to be one of, of, of rejoicing necessarily, but it's the overall attitude. It's the overall attitude. But that's, that's my outlook on life. I, it, it's not a perfect life, but I, I have it in context. I know that there are things I want to fix, I need to fix, uh, concerning aspects of my life. Uh, uh, but, you know, that, that's always, you know, that's always the goal to strive to do better. But I know that, that there's more after this life, there's more beyond this life. This isn't all of it, you know. And so these challenges I'm not always going to have to face. You know, there's something that, that's better that's going to come. And that is, that is a major part of what gives me a merry heart. That plus, you know, it's just, it's tiresome to myself. It would be tiresome to other people, you know, going around, uh, you know, blaming the world or, or whomever for my problems, you know. 
So uh, anyway, that those are some passages that that I read every day, and that just kind of helps me prepare my mindset for the day to try to get me in in the right frame of mind, the right attitude, so that I can face those challenges. Good Sunday morning. Whew. Well, last Sunday morning, last Sunday, uh, it went well there in Mason. Uh, everybody was really nice, uh, and so I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I got back, left real early, got back at like 9.30 or later, and I was tired, so I just went straight to bed, and I thought, well, I'll, just, I'll put up a video next week. I'll get, get one up next week, so I, I wasn't, wasn't too worried about it, but... And the nice thing about this past week was uh, the cool weather. We had a lot of nice, cool weather. Uh, I think it was Friday morning. It was down, uh, it was as low as uh, the mid-40s, 45 or something like that, when I finally got up. It rained, We had, which was good. We needed, we needed a, uh, the rain for sure. But, uh, you know, down here in Texas, when we, when we get, dip down into the 50s, uh, or maybe, maybe even the lower 60s or something, it's time to start making the chili and the soups, and everybody was really getting into that. And so my sister-in-law was out of town right now, so uh, I went ahead and thought, well, you know, I'll make, I'll make everybody uh, supper last night. I made uh, uh, some sausage, cabbage soup. Oh, that was really good. They really liked it, so that hit the spot. So this is, uh, I think, Columbus Day weekend. I think tomorrow is Columbus Day. So, uh, guys, I hope you have a very safe and happy Columbus Day. Uh, for me, I have, uh, with my college classes, I, this midterm exams uh, that are due uh, tomorrow. So I'm going to be spending the next two days studying and taking exams. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.